Hello, this video is on the uh, whole topic of archetypes and symbolism and the imagination in the Middle Way series. So, in a previous video, I mentioned that one needed to have or look for or be open to the synthesis and integration between the imagination and the thinking mind. So now I'm going to focus more particularly on the way that the imagination is helpful in the path or on the path and uh, be open to how within the imagination there needs to be a middle way. So I suppose very simply put the, the extremes are that one sees the imagination as harmful, help, unhelpful, uh, a hindrance, uh, a delusion, uh, you know, pure fantasy. And on the other hand, one lives uh, in the negative sense in fantasy, or even that one lives in a sort of archetypal world, but it's disconnected uh, from a more grounded, down-to-earth perception of oneself and the use of understanding and reason. So, the way that I'm going to approach archetypes in this video is in terms of an old view of the, uh, the kingdom. Uh, so, there would be a, a ruler and, and various figures around the ruler. So, the ruler in the middle way model uh, is not on the one hand despotic uh, and over controlling and on the other hand not too lax and just lets everything go. So there is a way in which the ruler archetype has a sense of everything that's going on but doesn't necessarily meddle in everything. Uh, but has a, a sense of relationship to all the major archetypes uh, that are present. So uh, a, another important archetype which the, the ruler is in relationship to is the wise advisor or sage. And the sage archetype in itself needs to be in the middle way not just completely unworldly on the one hand, uh, but also not completely just giving advice only on worldly matters. So the sage is, has the wisdom to have the integration of uh, higher aspirations for the king and for everyone in the kingdom, uh, while at the same time a sense of uh, realism about what is possible and what can be done. So in this way the, the sage it has a synthesis of, of aspiration and grounded sensible practicality. Now there are some other archetypes which are quite important. I'm just disappearing for a moment and then coming back. And uh, one of the ones that I think is very interesting uh, that is not perhaps usually thought of as a primal archetype but I like to think of it as so is the, uh, the estate manager, uh, the overall sort of practical manager of the kingdom who uh, looks after all the practical matters and the estate manager has within his authority and within his influence uh, a number of different other archetypes. So for example, uh, uh, the, the agriculturist who grows and nurtures and nourishes uh, the sustenance for the kingdom, the, the gardener that brings beauty, the irrigator who brings you know, flow of water flowing through the whole kingdom. 
we're talking on a, a, a symbolic level here. Um, you could also say uh, pest control uh, might be one of the archetypes which uh, the estate manager has within his domain, as it were. So within the, the sort of imaginative archetypal aspect of uh, the, the kingdom, there is practicality in relationship to the sage. So the, the estate manager sort of sees the detail of what is happening and what needs to be done and is not over controlling. Uh, and not too lax either. So uh, there's not just an emphasis only on uh, growing food and making sure that one is sustained, but also in relationship to that sense of beauty with the gardener. And they, they sort of merge together. And this sort of synthesis between the relationship between the sage and the estate manager is a middle way. That one is always, in a way, having a sense of the bigger picture and at the same time very practical. And another uh, archetype which I think is um, very, very interesting and one that I often bring to mind is that of the investigator. What's going on? What's happening here? Is there any subterfuge? Is there anything going against the ethics of the kingdom? Are there any uh, unethical views, attitudes sneaking in uh, covertly? And has something been done that shouldn't be done? And so the investigator is, as it were, particularly in a way looking for trouble, uh, getting a sense of was was that in accordance with your your principles and your your values and your ethics and what you feel is just and fair and honest, uh, or did it in some way go against that and? be sort of snidely dishonest or uh, covering up something, uh, taking something that shouldn't have been taken, cutting off something that shouldn't have been cut off. And in this way, the investigator is itself uh, quite balanced or, or has a synthesis of being diligent but not gallingly investigative so that the the investigation isn't harsh and causing fear and trepidation in the kingdom of oneself. Uh, another archetype which I think is very interesting in terms of one's growth and development is that of the, the jester or the joker, the trickster. Uh, even the entertainer, and how one relates to this archetype uh, is, is quite interesting. Some people just don't think that it's important, other people think it's very important. And the, But I do think that this sort of, as an archetype, an internal archetype, not so much as a way of behaving with others, but as an internal archetype, I think that it is important. Uh, so that there is always a sense of the relationship between the, the joker and the sage. The sage, quite rightly, can be very serious and uh, have a sense of gravitas. But the, the joker in relationship can see and be in relationship to what the sage is seeing, but also make light of it and show different sides of it in a fun way. And I think that on the path of awareness and growth and development, this uh, quality of seeing the lighter side 
in relationship to the gravitas and, and uh, clarity and wisdom side is, is important. But of course there is a, a middle way <laughs> and the middle way is a bringing together of the, the two archetypes in a way that is harmonious uh, and that they get on. And, uh, and, and there's a sort of even a partnership and relationship. So sometimes, you know, I'll notice that I might be getting too jokey uh, and the sage sort of needs to come in a bit and say, well, look, calm down, look at the bigger picture and uh, stop dancing around on the rooftops. And on the other hand, uh, the, the joker might just go to the sage, you know, you're just being too serious. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the lighter side for a moment. Uh, and so in this way, there's this sort of middle way between two quite very important aspects or archetypes, uh, but bringing them together. The, there are, there's another pair that is often described in uh, uh, archetype and symbolism of the, the warrior and the lover. Um, I think that just very briefly one needs to keep a relationship between the aspect of oneself that is prepared to be fearless and to face difficulty and to keep going in the face of difficulty, to, uh, to keep on going. And on the other hand, the, the sense of care and love uh, that one can have uh, for oneself and beings as well and including enjoyment. So this sort of a r relationship between on the one hand uh, not being too gallingly uh, militant and on the other hand not too sort of laissez-faire dilettante uh, lover just enjoying everything but coming to bringing these archetypes together into a synthesis in a way a sort of higher point in, within oneself uh, so that there is a relationship between what they represent.